ASP.NET provides several different web server controls that you can add into your website to secure different parts of it. So we can log in, we can deal with passwords, and much more. So in this section, I'm going to walk through a few of these controls, and then I'll demonstrate how you can use them in your web applications. So here's a list of the different controls that are available. Logging users in and out. Typically we have to drag on labels, text boxes, a button, and that type of thing to get the user credentials. And then we'd have to write code to call into the membership provider, hit that ASP.NET DB database, and all of that. Well, if you use the login control, it does all that for you. You can literally drag it on, gives you username and password functionality, and when you hit enter, it automatically has the code built in to hit the database and check to see if that user has entered a uh, correct username or password. Login View provides a customized way to template a control and provide different views of data if a user is logged in or logged out. Password recovery is pretty obvious. That one is a very simple control to use. You can simply hook it up and make it so if the user's password is encrypted or stored in clear text in the database, then you can recover it and email it to them. Login status is a very simple control. It just shows either the login link or the logout link based on the status of the current user. Login name will actually show the user's name. And then at some point you might need to register users. And that would be the case typically on internet sites where before a user can log in, of course, they have to register. I've done that a couple times throughout this module actually. So we'll look at the create user wizard tool and control. And then finally, if you need to change your password, there's even a control for that. So you can see all the major stuff is already covered. Literally, you can drag these controls on to your web forms, and you can get going, and then you can change the appropriate properties. So let me just take a really quick look and walk you through what these look like. So the login control looks just like a standard web server control. You can see we have ASP login, we give it an ID, and we have run at server. Now aside from those standard kind of staple attributes or properties that you'll add, you'll notice we've also added in this example, create user URL. That way if they go to the login screen but they haven't registered yet, you can give them the URL and it'll automatically display it for you. You can also go in and give the text for that URL if you'd like, and that's the create user text. So we're going to say in this case, create a user account. So very, very simple, and you can even customize some different templates for this. Now the create user wizard control is the registration control. So this automatically will capture things like the username they want, their email address, and their password. And all we have to do is drag it on. It puts all the key stuff. And then we can also customize through templates and steps it provides the different data we want to capture. Now one of the things once they've registered that you might want to do is set where do they go once they actually click the button to register. And you can see that there's this continue destination page URL. In this case, we'd go to default.aspx. So very, very simple. And you can even configure all this, of course, visually in Visual Web Developer Express or Visual Studio through the properties window. The next one is the logging view control. And I really like this one because the login control just shows links. It just shows login, log out based on their status. Well, sometimes you actually want to show more specific messages, more than just a, a login type of link. So in this example, we're using two of the templates that are provided, anonymous template and logged in template. And they serve the very obvious purpose of if the user is anonymous, they haven't logged in yet, we're going to show that text. And if we didn't have the uh, login page right here, in this case, it assumes that the login control, of course, is on the same page below. Then we could put links, we could put whatever we want inside of this template. If they're already logged in, we're going to go ahead and say welcome, and then we're going to use the login name control to automatically write out their username. And that will take care of that automatically just by dragging the login name control into this logged in template. So you can see it's pretty easy to get started with. And what's really nice about what I'll show you in a moment is you don't even have to write a lot of code to do this. This is showing you the code so you understand what happens, but most of this you can just drag and drop onto your web forms. So let's take a look at how we can use a few of these different controls. In this demonstration, I'm going to show how we can use some of the different ASP.NET security controls. So I have the time tracker application that we've seen a couple times across the modules in this course. 
And what we're going to do is simply secure the timesheet viewer, but I'm going to build the login, the registration, and some other related screens dynamically so that you can see everything and how it fits together. So right now in the secure folder you'll see that I have a web config and I've already secured the application to only allow the admin role. This is very similar to what we did earlier in the module. So now if you try to right click and go directly to that file you'll see that we're going to be taken to a login page but we don't have one yet. But you'll notice up top we have login.aspx. Now how did it know to go there? Well, if we go to the root web.config, you'll see that I've already enabled forms authentication, but I didn't specify a login page. Well, by default, ASP.NET will automatically use login.aspx as the default name. So you can certainly change that. We could come in and we could add a forms tag. And then there's a login URL and we could give it a different name if we'd like. But I'm going to go ahead and just leave the default. That makes sense to me and we'll go ahead and add our login page. So now we need a way to log in. Now as a point of review for the module I've already gone in to the ASP.NET configuration site and under security I have a user called JDO and JDO is in the admin group for roles. So we're all set up there. Alright so let's go ahead and get started then by right clicking on the project and we'll do add new item We'll do a web form and we'll call it login.aspx. Now I'm going to put this at the root of the site. You definitely don't want to put this in the secured folder, of course, because you'd never be able to get to it. So we're going to put it right at the root of the site. And from here, I could go to the toolbox. We could switch to design view. And I could start dragging on my text boxes and buttons and all that stuff. But obviously the reason for this demonstration is to show some of the security controls. So you'll see that in the toolbox, we have a login section and that login section defines the different controls that we can use. So we're going to go ahead and drag a login control and now I'm going to click on auto format and there's some built-in templates and of course with CSS and different colors and things you can certainly customize this even more but these are uh, some defaults for you and we'll hit OK. Now from here I'm ready to go. This control literally knows how to call into the app uh, data folder and get to the ASP.NET DB file, which is our SQL Express database. So I'm ready to go. However, if they come to this screen first, if they tried to go directly to the secure file, they're now going to be taken to this screen. But if they haven't registered, we probably need a registration screen. So we need to be able to link from here to a registration screen. So let's go ahead and add that screen first. We'll do add new item. And I'll just call this registration.aspx. And in here, we're going to go back into to design view. We'll go to the toolbox. And now I'm going to drag on a create user wizard control. Now, this actually uses a control that's built into ASP.NET called the wizard control. It allows multiple step processes to be defined. So if you want to break a large form into pieces, you could use the wizard control. Well, this is based on that. And you'll see that I can actually come in and do multiple steps. So right now we only have two steps and we're going to go with the defaults for this demonstration. But I could certainly go in and we can add and remove different wizard steps just by clicking on the different button here. And that would allow me to actually capture additional information if I want more than just username, password, email, and some security info. And I can break it up into multiple screens, which is pretty nice. So we're going to go to auto format. We'll select the same color scheme as I already did for the login control. But we do need to define, once they filled this in and they hit create user, as shown by the steps, what will happen next is they'll go to the complete screen. And then there'll be a button they can click to get out of that. Well, how do we set that? Where do they go once they click it? Well, if we go to the properties, we can scroll on down into our C's area. Let me make this just a little bit wider and you'll see that we have a continue destination page. Now from here I'm going to assume that once they've logged in through this registration screen, which will happen by default, that they want to go directly to the time, time tracker or at least try to. Now if they can't make it, they'll be redirected back to the login. So 
you could certainly change this up a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and click on Secure, click on Timesheet Viewer, and hit OK. Now when they hit the Continue button after filling out this information, they'll automatically be taken to this Timesheet Viewer screen. And again, you might not want to do that. It depends on your application. Okay, so we'll save that and close it. We're done with the registration screen. You can see how easy that is. And if we go to the source, you'll see that it actually has two wizard steps here. So we have a create user wizard step and a complete wizard step. And then we can actually go and make custom wizard steps if we'd like. And we have some custom styles based on that general yellowish type theme that I picked. Okay, so on the login screen, we need to build a link to the registration screen because if, obviously if they haven't registered and they want to, uh, as long as they're in the admin role, then they'd be able to get in. If not, they won't. So the easy way to do that is we'll come to the properties and we can actually go in and say, what is the uh, page they would go to for the create user text? And so you can see create user text and create user URL, which is uh, by user text, we mean the registration screen. So create user URL would be our registration ASPX and I'm just going to say register. You'll notice that automatically puts the link. Now we certainly could have done that on our own you know above or below this control but that sure makes it easy to work with and it does it automatically for us. That's just built into the control. Now likewise this control is just consi uh, con consists of different tags and you can see what we just did is added as a property. Okay, so at this point, now we have a login screen. So if we try to go to Timesheet Viewer directly, let's view it in the browser, we're now taken to the login screen, and let's go ahead and see what we have uh, at this point. So we, we're going to do JDoe and the password I entered. We'll log in, and you'll notice I'm now into the time tracker. So that worked very nicely. We might want to show some other information though. Maybe on this particular screen up here, we'd like to below this put their login status so they can log out. We might even want to customize the view of the login. So let's take a look at how we can do that. There's two main ways to let the user know their login view status. And if we come over to the toolbox, you'll see those. We could do the login status, and that simply displays a login or logout link by default or we could do the login view control. So let me show you both of those. So what I'm going to do is come over to our master page. We'll switch over to design view and right up here in the header I'm going to drag on a login status control. Now this particular control has our login logged out uh, views and what it's going to do is if you're logged in it'll say log out. If you're logged out it'll say log in as you see right here. So if we run this as is Let's go to our home page. You'll see it, uh, I'm already logged in actually. So we'll log out and we'll log back in. It takes me to the login page. So a very, very simple control to use. Now if you want more control over what displays, then you can actually use templates that are provided by the login view control. So the login status just shows the links by default. The login view provides an anonymous template and a logged in template that allow you to customize what's shown in those two different modes. So we can drag that on. And what this allows you to do is use these two templates that you see here. So we have both of those that are available. And you can simply drag and drop into here, or you can come into the source. And since those aren't in there yet, let's just go ahead and add them to show that. And we can do our anonymous template, and we can do our logged in template and it makes it very easy to now add different things into these templates. So I could say uh, please log in and we could just put some basic HTML in here if we'd like. And I'll say log in. And then in the logged in template we could say welcome uh, user. Let's just do that for now. Let's see if we can get this working first. So I'm going to run off to default ASPX. We'll view in browser and you'll notice it says please log in now. So I have control. Let's go ahead and log in. And you'll notice now it says welcome user. Well it would kind of be nice if we could personalize it a little bit more and say welcome name of the user account, JDoe or whatever it may be for their username. And we can do that as well. 
we can actually come in to our master page come back in here instead of welcome user there's another control and in fact we can just drag this in to save a little typing called login name and the login name control will simply write out welcome in this case J Doe because that's who I'm uh, logged in as so let's go ahead and try that out alright so it says please log in we'll go ahead and log in now do J Doe and we'll log in and you can see now it says welcome J Doe so very nice because I've yet to write any C Sharp or VB code this is all just built into the security controls makes it very easy to work with so that's the main controls I wanted to show at this stage and let's go ahead and now put it all together um, let's go in we'll create a new account we'll register we'll then log in and then we'll hopefully get to the timesheet viewer and I'll show you what's gonna happen though security wise so first thing I'm gonna do is just try to go to timesheet viewer directly and if we're not logged in then nothing will happen there we'll go to the login screen like we'd expect but I don't want to log in as J Doe. Let's say in this case that I am G Doe. And I'm going to give it a password, give it an email, and we'll kind of fake the security question. We'll hit create user. Okay, so it just created G Doe. And when I hit continue here, it will now take me to wherever I told it to in the continue URL. Now recall that earlier when we did the registration I set the continue URL to actually go to the timesheet viewer and we saw that in the different properties that we have here and we have continue destination page URL and that continue destination page went to here now, so why didn't we get in because we did log in successfully but it took us the login well the answer is that we are a user now but recall that only admin users can get into this and this user is not an admin user so you can see the security worked so I'm gonna come back up to our configuration let's run into that uh, user real quick and we'll manage let's go to GDO we'll edit roles check admin now we should be able to get directly into that role let's go ahead and try to go into timesheet viewer or be, go to the login we'll do GDO and we'll do our password we'll log in and now we're in where we'd like. So that's an example of using several of the controls. Now when you create a brand new ASP.NET web application you'll also get the login and the registration created for you. I wanted to show how to go through them from scratch so you saw a few of the properties but let's go ahead and close this to wrap up and I'm gonna create a new project from scratch and we'll do a web application and we'll hit OK here and you'll notice that right off the bat there's this account folder and they already have the login the register and even a, a change password screen which uses our change password control you can see that control right here where they can uh, change it and that's all done for you and there's other controls you can use as well but they'll help get you started out of the box with the default web application template really helps out in kind of jump starting the process but now you know how everything fits together and some of the other controls that you can use as you're adding security into your web application.